the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Mark chapter 12 verses 38 to 44. In his teaching, Jesus said, Beware of the scribes who like to walk about in long robes, to be greeted obsequiously in the market squares, to take the front seats in the synagogues and the places of honor at banquets. These are the men who swallow the property of widows while making a show of lengthy prayers. The more severe will be the sentence they receive. He sat down opposite the treasury and watched the people putting money into the treasury. And many of the rich put in a great deal. A poor widow came and put in two small coins, the equivalent of a penny. Then he called his disciples and said to them, I tell you solemnly, this poor widow has put more in than all who have contributed to the treasury. For they all put in money they had over, but she, from the little she had asked, put in everything she possessed, all she had to live on. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Jesus Christ. My dear sisters, in line with what we are reflecting these days, Jesus comes to us through the word of God that has been given to us by condemning the leaders of his time who are cheating the widows who were seeking for honor and glory while in the eyes of God they were not at all honest. It is followed by a beautiful passage where Jesus acknowledges the contribution of a widow. Jesus says she put in everything so many people contributed, they all contributed from what was superfluous. But she gave in everything what she needed for a living. Something very encouraging for us. We also read in the book, in the Gospel of Matthew, the whole chapter 23rd is condemnation of the leaders of his time. Hypocrisy duplicity, seeking for human glory, forgetting the essentials, being attached to the accidentals and not following the will of God. Whole chapter is condemnation. Let's ask ourselves whether these condemnations will also be in one way or other applicable to us. Look at this poor widow Nobody escapes the attention of Jesus. One poor widow, one person is also important. Poor people are also important. Widow who was despised in Jesus' time as they are now are important. What is consoling is that Jesus notices our contribution. You may be struggling hard, but the Lord looks at you with lots of love and attention, concern. That takes me to another woman who is uh, very much mentioned in the Gospels but sometimes very, very wrongly understood by us. I am thinking of uh, Mary Magdalene. Many people think that she is a sinner. Is she a sinner? What do you say? Is Mary Magdalene a sinner? Sinner or not sinner? 
You look like uh, sometimes non-Christians who have never heard about some of the passages in the Bible. Huh? Once upon a time she was a sinner. Yes. Some of you, like this only, our knowledge of the Bible and the biblical characters are very, very peripheral and superficial. I never read anywhere that she is a sinner. Never read anywhere that she is a sinner. Maybe you falsely identify this lady with uh, a sinner woman who is described in Luke chapter 7. Or like some others in John chapter 8, there is a woman caught in adultery. Maybe these are false identifications. Nowhere it is said that she is Mary Magdalene. Nowhere it is said that she is Mary Magdalene. For the first time, we hear about her in the Bible, say in Luke 8 chapter, in the context of the women disciples. We are told that many women also followed Jesus, and among whom was Mary Magdalene, who was possessed with seven demons. And the Lord cast them out, and Mary Magdalene and other women followed the Lord from their, uh, served the Lord from their resources. That's what we hear about her. Luke chapter 8. She was possessed with demons. She is not described as a sinner at all. Served the Lord from their resources. She was nobody she was nobody because she was possessed. She was made somebody by the healing. And what is the response? Serving the Lord. Serving the Lord with all their resources. With all her resources. The Lord has called us giving everything as superiors, as an individual sister, as Seva missionary. Giving to the Lord totally. That is your own vocation. You may be talented in a few areas. Give it to the Lord. Whatever it may be. Your energy, your vitality, your talents, your whole personality. Giving to the Lord. Giving to the Lord everything that you have. This is the occasion of all those who are called. Secondly, again, we hear about her. This I am sure you know during the Passion narrative. Isn't it? So what does she do during the Passion? What does she do? Yeah, she was there at the foot of the cross. Some of us are very good beginners, but poor finishers. The novitiate, we are good. Like children, no? Now at the beginning of the academic year, all the notebooks are wrapped very beautifully. And then if you see at the end, not even at the end, already in December they will be uh, in bits and pieces. <laughs> bits and pieces. It's not enough to begin well, but we have to also end well. Well begin is half done, they say. But it is only half done, not fully done. It's like a doctor who knows to cut but doesn't know to stitch. What is the use of such a surgeon? Same thing. So she is following the Lord. She is following the Lord till the very end. At the foot of the cross, the disciples who were challenging that they will not run away, they all deserted the Lord. But then this woman was courageously, boldly standing there, standing there at the foot of the cross. I want to ask you some more. Do you know, was she there after the burial? Huh? She went home? When? Only third day. That's what you know. That's why you have not read the Bible. None of you have read the Bible also. So, after Jesus is buried, she went home, isn't it? When, when did she go to the tomb again? When did she go to the tomb again? On the third day. She was in the cemetery only. Huh? So she did not go home like the others. 
No, not sure. Simply, we will say something, one of them will be right, so like that, like that. Because we are, not, we are not paid attention. So, Matthew 27, chapter, verse 61. 27, chapter, verse 61. Somebody asked, 27, chapter, verse 61. Yes, after Jesus is buried, she is there sitting before the tomb. She was standing before the foot of the cross. She is sitting before the tomb. Whenever we go for the funeral, what happens is we want to put a handful of mud and come home as early as possible to take bath. This woman, after Jesus is buried, pours out her love and sitting before the tomb, pouring out her love for the Lord. That's really marvelous. Uh, sad that such a, a piece of information escaped your attention or so many people's attention. Nobody knows about it. She doesn't want to come away from the Lord who gave her everything. That is discipleship. That is following the Lord. That is being faithful to the Lord. That is being faithful to the Lord. Then, of course, you know, the post-resurrection scene. The Lord appearing to her first. She did not keep quiet. She went to the tomb, found the tomb empty with the other women, ran to Peter and John, informed them, I have informed the leaders, what does it matter to me? They will take care. No. Once again runs back to the room. And then at least four or five times it is mentioned she was weeping. She was weeping. And then the Lord asks her, Why are you weeping? He thinks uh, he is the gardener. And if you have taken him away, tell me I will take courageously, boldly, wanting to do everything to have the Lord back. And then one word, Mary, is enough for her. Immediately she responds, Rabuni, and holds on to Jesus, and the Lord sends her to be the apostle to apostles. This is the vocation and mission of each and every religious. Being touched by the Lord, understanding your own dignity that is given by the Lord, in gratitude, serving the Lord with all your resources, following the Lord till the foot of the cross, sitting before the Lord, seeking the Lord, weeping for the Lord, weeping before the Lord, hearing the voice of the Lord, recognizing the Lord as your master, being sent by the Lord to be apostle, to tell the world that I have seen the Lord. The woman, the poor woman is an example for us. The poor woman is an example for us. So here, a uh, poor widow is an example for total surrender, totally giving. Everything I have is from the Lord. I like another Mary, Mary of Bethany also. These are women whom we have to imitate. Mary of Bethany. In uh, John uh, 12th chapter, after the resurrection or resuscitation, of her beloved brother Lazarus, we see her conduct. We are told that very, very costly ointment was brought by her and that she anointed Jesus. Very, very costly ointment. Maybe it was her lifetime saving. Namanan Chirkum, Kalyan the Golavo, Dauria Kudai the Kong, Halal or Vida Katla, Abdilla and Chirkum. The Lord gave him back. What does it matter? Even if I have to spend all my savings, doesn't matter. Nothing I want for myself. I want to show my love for the Lord. That's why that lady is so generous in returning to Jesus her own gratitude for the life of her beloved. Already they were friends, all right, in addition. And when other people are grumbling, finding fault with her, Jesus acknowledges her contribution, acknowledges her love. That's what we are called to be. Be generous like Mary of Bethany. You are saving. Why at all we have God has given us life to work hard, not to be lazy, to give ourselves, to break our schedule. 
like Jesus the Master himself, as I said yesterday, who is ready to be interrupted, ready to be interrupted, ready to be disturbed. Superiors must be like these women in the sense of total surrender, being available, being always approachable, giving to the Lord and to the community, they are all. That is our life. This Eucharist we are celebrating once again speaks of the total surrender, total breaking of Jesus who came for us, for our food to be given to us for our nourishment. We have to eat, we have to drink Him. Throughout the day, as superiors, you are asked to say to others, take and eat. You have to tell the community also, take and eat. My time is for you. My schedule is for you. My talents are for you. Take and eat, take and drink. Motherly attitude. Take and eat. Otherwise, this celebration is meaningless. May the Lord really inspire us through these three women. The widow whom Jesus noticed in the treasury. Mary of Magdalene who followed the Lord till the very end. Mary of Bethany who gave her all to Jesus. Besides listening to Jesus, drinking from his life-giving word of life, she gave her all to Jesus. May these women inspire us in our path of discipleship. Amen.